Assalamu alaikum, marhaban, and welcome back to another session here as I'm here with the beautiful gamer personality, Heya, how are you? I'm good, thank you, how are you? I'm good, you know, never better, I guess, at this point. A lot of things are happening here with DGC, and uh, now I just heard as well in our little conversation, you're heavily involved in esports, so tell me more about that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's why I'm here. But um, mainly, I am heavily involved. I used to game a lot when oh. I was younger. And from that, because I couldn't really make a career out of my gaming... Career. Yes, career. Right. So because of that, there wasn't really much opportunities for me back then. Mm. So I decided to take a more business approach okay. and focus on esports education, mm. how to activate esports in the industry, okay. um, what are the steps need needed to be taken and how to fill the gaps in the market. That's a lot of stuff going on there. Yes. And that's the stuff that's going to happen in the next five to ten years. Wow. Even, even sooner right with Maybe. how things are really rapidly going so how are you applying all of that right now I'm just really curious what in what sense like you just said you know activities education yeah. esports because just a few years ago people see esports as just gaming yeah. and now it's like oh it's not gaming anymore it's actual sports we now we have e-athletes Yes. You know, electronic athletes, and they're considered as athletes and not gamers anymore. So now you're putting esports into activities, education, a curriculum. What's that all about? I mean, if you see how esports, every year there's a lot of money behind it. Yeah. There's, there are more viewers in esports than NFL and all the sports channel combined. No disrespect. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's getting it's a lot of views, really. But, but because esports has no entry barrier, it's very versatile. Anyone could, anyone can game. Right. Really, I mean, it's up to you to decide to take it as a profession. And they saw the continuous demand in the ecosystem of the esports industry and right. how it's not limited to just gaming, but it's right. developing games, publishing games, um, becoming a salesperson, the marketing. It's, it's really, there's endless opportunities. And that's why they suddenly realized that there should be curriculum and it should be some sort of a degree in university. Degree in university, I would love to take that, you know, honestly. Yeah. I've been looking around into degrees as well, back uh, there in the US, in the UK, even in Korea right now. You know, they're having curriculums for esports. Yeah. Because just a few years ago, um, you know, we all saw what's happening here. Um, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Abu Dhabi, Egypt, you know, even Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia. They do an event. They see it as an event, right? They bring some games, a big screen, you know, and they game, game, game. And once it's done, they take a picture with the winner and everything is done. Yeah. But now we just open up the fact that esports is way more than that. It's an actual sports. What makes an NFL a popular sports? What makes soccer a popular sports? F1, right? Or the UFC, Brave, KHK, all of that. There's a lot to it. So it's so interesting to see that you're tapping the different points. So where do you see yourself with, with all of that in the midst of the esports world? Um, really, I imagine myself just being heavily involved in this strategy and okay. uh, forming uh, conceptualization of how esports should enter a new market mm. and how to fill those gaps, how to understand esports in the gamer's perspective. Um, for example, when when the Girl Gamer Festival happened yeah, last February, um, I realized then after the competition, after everything is over, that's it. That's the it, conversation right? is over. There right. wasn't really, okay, so this is a good starting point, but how do you continue the story? Where's exactly. the narrative? Exactly. Where are these centers where I can practice gaming? Right. Where I don't feel like an outsider mm. or entering an internet cafe. It's like, oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> what? You? Cute? Girl? Play? Cafe? How? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. This puts together. So, yeah, that's, that's mainly it. Okay. Now, Let's talk about you and gaming. What do you game right now, if ever, right now? You're doing the strategy part, but let's say you've done your part, that said now you want to be an athlete, now you want to go and compete. What game are you going to pick? Definitely Call of Duty. Which one? I, I love, my favorite Call of Duty was Black Ops. Oh. But right now it has to be Modern Warfare, right. and definitely right. I would be 
more heavily invested in the new game, which mm. is Cold War. Cold War, yeah. It makes sense. I mean, that's how competitions go. It's always the newer games. Mm. You practice and you compete in new games, just like with FIFA. Right. You compete in FIFA 21. Right. Um, but I do also love adventure games, like the mm. new Spider-Man. I love it. Miles Morales? Or, yes. I love that game. Or The Last of Us. I appreciate those games too. Game I mean, of the year. Last of Us too. <laughs> yeah. So, no, th that's definitely what I would be doing now. Okay. For, for me, Maz Morales was a good game for me because I'm playing it with my kid. Yeah. So we, t we take turns. He's definitely better than me, unfortunately, but hey. <laughs> and uh, when it comes to eSports, I guess it seems like there is a lot going on. Um, some people take eSports uh, in the sense if you like the game, but now it seems because eSports, social media, fame, money is taking all that in one paradigm. And it seems like, you know, certain people, you see them playing Fortnite, yeah. PUBG, they don't like the game but they see the numbers in the game. They see the huge attention to it. All of a sudden, they just like, to the point, I know a friend, um, he hired a Fortnite coach. Imagine this, guys, a Fortnite coach. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's online right now. <laughs> he pays him by the hour to learn Fortnite so he can go compete and then open his own Fortnite channel. So it's become like a big business. Yeah, it's nothing new, really. It's been around for a while, and that's how teams are improving right. with coaches. And even if you go to Fiverr, usually you go oh, there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I found him, actually. <laughs> that coach is on yeah, Fiverr. Yeah, so I could really, like, I'm not great at sniping. So All if right. I want to get the extra support, I could literally, instead of going YouTube, I could have someone by my side telling me exactly where I'm going wrong, teach me what sniper I should use right. if I'm... Like if I want a quick scope or whatever, okay. um, but yeah, there are so many, so many new things that emerge, and this is no. why esports is a hot topic. It is right. I mean, it's a lot going on the esports right now. Um, and again, it's like okay, somebody told me okay, if it's a sport and we treat it as a sport, you know that you have broadcasting rights, you have coaches, you know, you have people taking care of their psychological being, yeah. nutrition even, and making sure they play right. And they say, okay, but the problem is, if you see it as a sport, for example, a Formula One driver, he just drives and that's it, right? He just understands the mechanics of different cars. Then you have soccer players, they soccer, right? Basketball, NFL, UFC, uh, MMA. But the thing is with esports, you have a person playing a certain game. He focuses on that one game, Call of Duty. But yeah. then the problem with that game, if it loses popularity, he has to jump to another game where there are other people already been like ahead of his game at yeah. this point. So they would tell us like it is a very tricky field. And I'm like, it is. It's not easy. But what do you think of that? Um, I think with these things, this is where like education and the degrees mm. or whatever comes into play because then you get to learn not to focus on one game but focus on your skills your soft skills mm. your hand-eye coordination okay. how you can transfer those, those skills into anything so let's say one day you decided you know what i don't want a game anymore right. i want to become a host Huh. With, with these degrees or right. with these education programs, it facilitates, opens doors for you way beyond than just gaming. And maybe this is where also sponsors can come into play and right. help developers stay alive or keep producing games. I mean, yes, if games don't, if games lose popularity, it's due to maybe lack of sponsors mm. or lack of interest. People are moving on to the next best game right. and it's also up to the gamer to decide okay how am i going to transfer my skills True. what do i need to do it's a, a lot of risk involved of course there is a lot of risk you yeah. have to foresee what's going to happen to the game right yeah you know absolutely right i mean i've seen a lot of examples taking place here in the middle east like um in Bahrain, for example, like in 2016, we had the Bahrain Gaming uh, Conference and the Bahrain Gaming Day where PlayStation themselves came to Bahrain and they've done this humongous eSport event, but it was called gaming later on. Uh, they had FIFA. You would win a Mini Cooper and a cash prize. But what happened there, just like you said, the educational part was not there. They saw it as an event. Yeah. So like you said earlier, the moment the event was done, 
that's it, end of conversation. You took a picture with the winner and hey, look, I won. I have a car now. I'm leaving with my new Mini Cooper. And that's about it. That guy could have been a star up until today if the right media was around him with our education, like you just mentioned. Same thing, it happened in Saudi Arabia. We had some Overwatch uh, tournaments taking place. We had the Nexus League of Legends, one of the biggest esports events I've seen in my life in the Middle East. Then you have in Egypt, they have their own games like Crossfire. Have you heard of that? Not really. Exactly, right? Because it's just popular in Egypt. Yeah. They did one event and that's it. It, uh, it ended there. Then we had the PUBG, uh, the Fortnite events, all taking place, but they still see it as an event, a yeah. gaming event. So it's, uh, what you're doing here is a big deal, to be honest. Educating people for like, esports is more than just a gaming gathering. It's yeah, it's more than just the prize pool, like, oh, million dollar prize pool. Um, and I w maybe I would like to ask you, what do you think of mobile gaming in general? Yes, yes, I would definitely go to that as well. Mobile gaming, it's a huge thing. It's just, there's so much to talk about mobile gaming, like even if you involve that with esports or just a casual gamer and just uh, take it from there. Huh, for me, I would say, I would consider gaming and mobile gaming uh, for two things. Either there is a good traffic, you know, if you wanna just create content, or because it's a casual timing, I just wanna have it for myself or my friends, like Among Us. How is yeah. that with you? I, I like the game, but I don't seem to understand is that certain games like Among Us or PUBG, once they become so popular and a lot of streamers start streaming the game, you find them streaming it on PC, but it's a mobile yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, they do that and for I, content, I'm, right? It makes me wonder, like, why, why do streamers, like, let's say, I know it's easier to use, but what, what happened, like, what is mobile games? Like, are they going to be as popular as PC games mm. or PS4? Or are they just limited to day-to-day -day waste timing, killing time? Interesting, interesting. I mean, they'd, to be fair, a lot mm. of mobile games became popular because of them being in mobile and the access. And a lot of people were interested in watching these streamers play that game because they all could play it. And suddenly, when they stream, it's like, oh, I'm streaming on PC. And it's like, why? I have a friend in Bahrain, Mohammed. He has a channel for the game Clash of Clans. Yeah, I love this game. 800,000 subscribers. He makes around, let's say, 20K dirhams, that what I know of, <laughs> okay? That's just from streaming. It seems like right now it depends on your path when it comes to mobile gaming. If you want to do it casually, okay, you do it casually. You want to do it for eSport purposes like PUBG, uh, you do it for that purpose. You want to create content. Like for example, um, you got Clash of Clans, Clash Royale. These two games made it big time when it comes to like mainstream popularity on YouTube and different stuff. I guess the, why they would do it on PC, from my perspective, is to create content because it's popular. So Among Us right now will be easier for you to screen record it on a PC for editing purposes and to add all these effects yeah. versus we want to do it on a phone because if you want to record, screen record and you want to play, the phone will like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh my God, it's overheating. And maybe this is an opportunity. This is another gap in the market where um, mobiles in general could be optimized because you can edit on your mobile. You right. can install Adobe, you can install Rush, these yeah, Adobe Rush. A lot of people edit already on their phone. Right. And I do screen record my gameplays on PUBG. Okay. And I just cut and edit. It's nice. fine. It's easy. But of course, it could be slower and the processing power and recording myself. Maybe I'll have to attach a camera right, or right. a tripod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I understand the limitations. And maybe this is where mobile, uh, I don't know what you call them, but Siani and no, mm. they could come and optimize and help the people who want to stream m via mobile right. make it easier for them. So that, because to me personally, I know PC is easier, but I just like the, like how easy it is moving around and you could so record one, wherever. You don't need yeah, your... One spot for everything, right? Exactly. You don't need, maybe this is the future. You could record literally anywhere. You right. don't need a setup, you know? 
I mean, I mean, right now I'm thinking certain stores they give you like the starting kit or the media kit for just for mobile. It yeah. Comes with the light and the fluffy mic and and the trigger, <laughs> the triggers and all that. Yeah. Well, uh, that's why I guess right now in the market you have certain brands. You know, um, they are introducing mobile gaming phones. You know, their processing power is higher. The screen is like, oh my god, it's like yeah. a holding a TV now and stuff like that. So I guess right now they're catering to the market and you know, slowly but surely is gonna come all on a mobile. But back to your question, it's like, uh, what's the case with it? It seems like um, there's a website called newzoo.com. It gives you all the stats on the game when it comes to esports and popularity of the games. Even hours have been watched on Twitch and different uh, platforms. And it seems like countries like China, for example, Asia right now, uh, India, mm. mobile gaming is outperforming consoles and PCs. I mean, it's like back in the day when we would do gaming, like AAA gaming, like, you know, you'll play with The Last of Us or yeah. God of War, Metal Gear. You think gaming is my time. I'm holding a joypad, I'm looking at a screen, and I'm playing. That's it. And it's like, oh, mobile, whatever, man. How far can a mobile go? <laughs> a long way, apparently. And from that news website you've looked at, which mobile games were ranking the highest? Depending on the country. Each country, so, like um, Mobile Legends in the Philippines, Indonesia, in, uh, in China is booming. League of Legends, for example, as well on the mobile version is doing well. Um, PUBG India, crazy. There, there, is, <laughs> there is a documentary, a movie documentary kind of style of a story of a little Indian boy, you know, leaving his work, leaving his life to pursue his passion to become a PUBG player. This is crazy. So, so it's, it's, it depends on the country. I would say if I would speak, uh, speak about my hometown, Bahrain, PUBG is still like up there. But what, what do you think? Like, what do you see as well? Um, definitely PUBG. I feel like the games sometimes with loot boxes. Yeah, okay. Do best. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's, uh, I don't know what it is about, about this element of... Um, it's the dopamine surprise. rush. Yes, the dopamine rush, <laughs> the surprise. I don't want to speak too much about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely uh, Clash of Clans. Oh, yes. Uh, Candy Crush is a great stress relief. How to forget. What kind of crash, um, exactly? And back in the days, I feel like notorious, even Minecraft. Oh man, Minecraft. Yes. But that's more of a PC thing, right? It is. I mean, it, it's again, everything is becoming mobile optimized. Even Call right. of Duty has Call a mobile version. You tried that? I have. What do you and think? Surprisingly, it's really good. Fun, right? Not I in the Battle Royale, right? I mean, no, no, no. The just action. the normal Call yeah. of Duty mobile version. But I was really surprised how it didn't feel very much different than playing on a controller. It was like, mm, mm. it's like the graphics are great, the, the touch and the buttons, the, it didn't feel like too unnatural. Mm. It was easy to learn. And so maybe this is also something with mobile gaming, like it's simple to learn. Yeah. Unlike with a controller, it's very hard to adapt at the beginning. Like I'm stuck with PS4, but I wouldn't go with an Xbox controller just ah. because I'm used to that control. Whereas mobile, we're so used to holding it every day. Right. It's second nature to us. So learning a new game on a mobile, it's very quick and easy. It's interesting like how they actually managed to do that. Um, I had an argument, I'm, I'm not sure, don't take my word for that, okay? <laughs> it's that when somebody told me, it's like, bro, do you know? It's interesting what's happening, I'm like what? The guys behind the development of Call of Duty, they're under ten Tencent, who owns PUBG. I'm like, interesting world. Yeah. <laughs> interesting world. So it seems like there is a lot going on in the sense that even uh, when it comes to developing the game, they understood the AI, they understood like for a, in a very long R&D session in that what works better for gamers when it comes to the handheld mo uh, touches, when, uh, how we want to hold it, when it comes to vertical or horizontal, and uh, where you want to place the buttons and how fast can you memorize the UI. Yeah. So, so cool stuff, Call of Duty Mobile, can you beat me? We'll find out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe if we get enough votes, you know, we can see. But hey, another game that we can talk about, I did not spend enough time with it, but it's so much fun, Brawl Stars. What is it? It's the same creators who actually did uh, Clash Royale. So what happens, like Supercell did this new game, and it's been there for a while. Um, they saw that, okay, with Clash Royale, they had fun. 
but now they want to create a new mechanism. So Brawl Stars right now, they go there, your Brawl. It's a two teams kind of thing. It's so much fun. You have to, please, please go download it. <laughs> it's so much fun. I'm not marketing here. I'm just telling you, it's a good game. What makes it good though? <laughs> the colors, the, me the mechanics. Uh, it's just, okay, so you're moving from one place to another. Maybe you can see a trailer in a bit about the game, you know, just to show you more about Brawl Stars. But, so you have two teams, right? So you move around and then you decide on a projectile where you want to hit the other team with. And there's a lot of taxes and strategies. It sounds kind of like complex, but it actually, when it comes to the game, the mechanics are so easy. And there's a lot of popularity to that game as well, especially in China and the States, from what I've seen so far. Are there loot boxes? You and your loot boxes. <laughs> <laughs> you like no. your dopamine, huh? Yeah, no, it's, um, it's a funny concept that's been introduced. I mean, it's a nice way of... It's interesting how it was introduced, you know mm. what I mean? Like. Mm. I've, uh, with FIFA for a while ago, like with the FIFA points right. and PUBG, you buy this or you, you buy more points and you might get an amazing right. kit or weapon or whatever. Right. But uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how this has become an integral part of gaming. Mm. Do you know? Like no, no, I am. I'm listening to you right now because the thing is, as you were talking, um, I've seen several cases where people like, they will go there and they just can't wait to see what's the next best thing. You know, yeah. we'll come collect some points in FIFA, like you just said, and the same thing even in Clash Royale, you know? Uh, um, Overwatch, it's been a big thing over there with loot boxes. Um, a lot of Battle Royale games as well, they take place with that. So it seems like it's a mechanism to get more people excited about the game, right? I mean, would you think that that's a way that you wanna just hold them down, it's like, hey, you can actually get the best thing ever just not, hold yeah, on definitely i mean i'm not sure if i'm supposed to say this but because recently in the uk they've classified loot boxes as gambling and they wanted to ban it so this is why it's interesting to see like maybe this is another part of gaming that yeah. makes it makes it so addicting like even with Cl clash of clans i used to spend so much money <laughs> just to <laughs> speed things up and like get uh, supplies and right. this element of like being impatient and just getting this, as you said, quick dopamine rush. How much do you think you spend so far on that? Um, I really don't want to say it publicly. <laughs> like a lifetime of debt. <laughs> Basic, definitely. Um, so yeah, even with FIFA. So mm. that's mm. also where this whole concept came to be. Like, is it gambling? Because you pay, but you're really, are you really getting your worth, money's worth with the packs, mm. with the players? Mm. So what do you, what's your take on that? Do you consider it as gambling? Now, when I said I've been reading a lot about that, actually one of the cases that took place was in the UK, you know, where somebody lost his, literally his educational um, savings, university on that. Yeah. Big time, big time. A friend of mine, I won't mention your name, Salman, <laughs> um, spent 40k dirhams on PUBG. He has all the skins, all the guns, everything. So it's, it, it's taking place right there. But it's interesting that how esports and gaming right now, it's more effective and interactive than the other forms that were t that's like big, taking place uh, around the world. Like, you know, when it comes to movies, series, magazines, it's a one linear thing. It's not interactive. But with gaming, with mobile gaming and esports, it's interactive, right? So there is way more ways to actually get a hold of you because you're not only watching, you're not just receiving the story, you're part of the story. You're taking place in the story. You go left and right, you can choose what, to, what you want. And you take the experiential part of it so it seems like with all of that, there is more ways to get you involved yeah. in the gaming world. Yeah. You know? And esports is definitely an integral part of all of this. It's like, okay, you are so involved in this. And the cool thing about it is that, you know, as a sport, you don't need to be fit. You know, you know you going to the gym every day, you know. Okay, the entry barrier is literally... It's free. Very low. Like, <laughs> even, even people of determination, they can play too. 
they have the opportunity. I've seen so many cases where they also are leading, they're being championing the games. Right. So this is the beauty of esports. But allow me to ask, what was ask. the first mobile game you've played? PUBG. Is it? Yes. I would say Snake on Nokia. Oh my god! Because <laughs> oh. that technically oh, is a mobile it game. Is. Thank you. Snake. <laughs> Nokia 3210. 3210. I remember the blue Nokia that never dies. The, the meme on, on, on Niangag that, that, you know, you throw it at anything, it will blow up. Yeah. That mobile will still be alive. But it's crazy. Oh, man. Oh, man. And it's just the cost of that game was like, what, zero? I have no idea. But it is addicting. What about the cost of games today? <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, like, let's say um, you go right now, like just on top of my head. Yeah. You would download a game engine like Game Salad, right? And uh, that will cost you 200 US dollars, that alone. The license for it is another 100 US dollars, depending on to, to pour it on which platform. Yeah. You get a developer that is like 30 minimum, let's say around five to 30 US dollars per hour of him coding. Then you get an animator. Then you get a guy who just do the skeleton of the animations, all that kind of stuff. Now, the game around, if it will take one, two, three years or two years of development, it could easily come around, let's say 20 to 30,000 US dollars. A friend of mine was using a, a gaming engine called Unreal Engine back at the time. And then it cost them around, like in Bahraini dinars, it was 8,000 Bahraini dinars. We're talking about 80K dirhams. And the game never even made it to the daylight. And he's like, it's because it, to the point, there was so much development going involved in the gaming field that even games like that, would, you would think, it said, no, with that kind of money, you're out there. But development is so, so hard and expensive, it can get a bit too high. But then when I thought like, oh my God, Snake, it's like, what's the cost of that game? <laughs> yeah. It's, I guess it's all about understanding the consumers and what they're looking for in a game. You think about it, are games, should games on mobile be cheaper than on PS? Is it they're taking, is it because it's CD, physical game? Right. It feels more valuable? I guess, I guess um, to that, um, I don't think it's the value as much as the cost of it itself, right? Because at the end of the day, you cannot go triple A on a mobile. You know, the, the limitations of the hardware itself. When it comes to PlayStation, Xbox, PC, it's a, it's a machine yeah. dedicated to the graphics manipulation and, uh, and, you know, and the processing and all of that. So for example, Metal Gear 2 was around 20 million US dollars, 20 million. It was the cost of doing a movie you know, um, The Last of Us 2, can't even tell anymore. It's I mean, you're, definitely that's true, but to be fair, like if we look at it, you, like you said, the limitations on mobile game versus the PS, the, the world is your oyster when it right. comes to PlayStation or PC, you could do whatever. Sure. W wouldn't, make it, wouldn't that make it even more difficult for developers to do it on mobile and considering there's always updates on your phone and you have to optimize regularly and mm. um it depends it really depends on the game it depends on what you want to have like because at the end of the day what is an update right yeah. if you want to bring something new to the game like back in the time um games uh back in ps2 or ps1 even ps3 they will sell it to you as a finished final product and that's it but then they saw like hmm i can make more money by bringing updates fortnite like for example, it never ends with updates. The same company, Epic, have other games, they stop their updates or they just sold you one-time game, final product, yeah. and that's it. Like for example, Gears of War. You know, that was an Epic game before. Uh, but now Fortnite, because there's always on demand. So back to your question, it's like, you no, know, the value and the cost and all that. Honestly, it, it now it's not about the platform anymore. It's really about the game. And it's really about the popularity of the game, the dynamics. It's about the people. What do they want? You know, sometimes it will cost you more money with a game like Fortnite on a mobile than uh, maybe on a, on, a, on a machine. It depends on where you want to go with that. All right, so now the cost of gaming and all of that, but you were talking to me behind the scenes about Among Us. So what was that point earlier? Um, I wanted to, I was wondering, like we're talking about prices of mobile gaming. Yeah. But Among Us is free. Mm. So where, how and 
what like where do they make the money right. well, where does it come from right. i mean like okay let's say um i don't know why i don't know why among us even though it's a different genre it's like I see among us and i just remember fall guys yeah for whatever reason and the same question goes to fall guys how are they making money as well but let's go to among us to me right now let's say i can think of the fact is that behind the scenes they have all this data that they can sell off right all this processing power they could be mining bitcoins with our phones right now we don't even know <laughs> you know using our phones to mine other cryptocurrencies we don't know right um data um transferring stuff here and there testing new stuff with technology because there's so much going on that we don't know behind the scenes that's so high tech that people will see value financially in that we don't understand uh, at least me you know like at face value um we don't do you see ads there i don't see ads. so there's no ads um you don't buy much stuff over there so it's very much i don't know it, it is kind of a mystery as well because again no the the mechanics have changed the decentralization of a lot of things in the gaming world is just phenomenal in the sense that there are a lot of ways right now to make money that we don't even know of yeah. you know, the traditional way you buy my game i take your money right um you want to buy more stuff you want to buy an extra skin you want to let Heya buy more stuff on Clash of Clans, you know, add to that debt. Um, you want to buy an extra character, you want to join a team. There's a lot of things going on and there's an ecosystem around the game. But it is a mystery, you know? If you know, let us know down below in the comments. Maybe send us an email if you have any idea because me and Heya, hmm, not sure. And definitely with mobile gaming, it would, do you think because it costs so we know that, okay, it costs less, I mean, yeah. nothing. And the fact that it's so easy, the entry, the barrier to entry is negligible. Everyone yeah. has a phone, right, right. assumingly, yeah. and we all could play on our phones. Uh, we don't need to buy a console that's maybe a thousand dollars. We don't need to buy a TV. Right. Everything is compact now in our right. phone. Right. Do you think in the future, mobile gaming will overtake? Interestingly enough, I don't think in the future, I think it's happening now in certain countries. Like again, um, people in India, what they do, uh, the Philippines or in China, they see more value of having a mobile phone than having a console. And it's like, oh, bro, you know, consoles are expensive. So are your phones. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the new iPhone? Have you seen the new Samsung, Huawei, and all these brands? They don't come cheap anymore, you know? It's like, literally, my Samsung is, is, is priced more than the PS5 today, you know? So, because, again, like you said, it comes with a screen, it's a phone, it's an all of that, so you don't have to get a TV screen, and it's mobile, the word mobile, right? But back to your question, I think it depends right now which country you're at. You know, certain countries, they have, and certain even neighborhoods, they have more phones than TVs. You know, they, 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 they outperformed in so many ways. So I think in the future, it depends on where we're heading. That's why I'm sure even big uh, console companies, whether it's Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, they know this, they see this. Like, for example, Nintendo right now, with the Nintendo Switch, is a mobile console slash home arcade. So they want to, you know, say, Okay, it's not about the graphics anymore, it's about the experience. So they saw that. So your Switch is a tablet and a gaming uh, system. It's for everybody. So they kind of saw that. With the late Miyamoto, he actually saw that vision coming to life in the 20s. So it's interesting stuff. What's going to happen in the future, I guess, is all up to the R&Ds and all up to the big companies. They're going to take us there. But so far right now, I mean, you see all these ASOS phones, Razer phones, right? Um, Nokia at one time had this NG, if you ever saw it before a long time ago. It's, Nokia actually did a mobile back thing in the 90s. Where, uh, yeah, in the 90s, yeah, yeah. It's a mobile gaming uh, phone, literally with buttons and stuff it's like blackberry just for it <laughs> for back games. then it wasn't recognized it wasn't valued enough or maybe just the research and the games weren't as I fulfilling the culture it was different yeah back then you still want to play a game on a big screen with your hands being involved on a joypad and buttons that you can actually press 
you know. Uh, but now things have changed. Like there is a generational gap big time. Like I started gaming back in the 80s and seeing what's happening today, like I can't even catch up with my son. My son's like, hey dad, we're gonna go to the BTS concert in Fortnite. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? What do you mean concert, BTS, Fortnite? How is it all it changed? Fortnite is not a game anymore. It's, it's a platform, it's a gathering, it's a mall. It's a social gathering. I mean, believe it or not, I had a, I had a business meeting in Fortnite. Mics, well, they all had, like when the pandemic took place, Zoom, like I'm still not really familiar with it. We had our meeting in Fortnite. <laughs> it's, just, it's just changed. It changed. Yeah, and another interesting, I mean, yes, definitely concerts, gatherings, uh, conferences are happening also uh, in Fortnite especially the Travis Scott that you had <laughs> over a million attendees, it's uh, insane. You've been there? No, <laughs> okay. but I, I appreciate the how gaming is no longer just gaming. Yeah. The fact that you're meeting people through an interdimensional space and this is where VR comes to play and how mobile, mm. you know, the, where you can attach right. your mobile in the right. VR. Right, interesting that you brought that up. Yeah, so what do you think about that? VR. Huh, mixed feelings, mixed feelings. Um, now, my, I would say the most intimate time I had with a VR experience was with the PlayStation VR, PSVR. Uh, but the thing is, because we had a world, we wanted things to be more simplistic. So the thing is with the VR right now, it's still all these wires and you know, the accessories that you have to give and take and certain hardware power and the, even the lighting affects it and all of that. I would say VR is a very fun experience, but it's not, I would say it's not about the price or the cost, but it's the practicality behind it, you know? That's why it seems like PlayStation right now are gonna be more focused on VR, where Microsoft are focused on AR Yeah. with the Hulu lens. Yeah. You wear it, your entire world becomes a gaming platform, you know? So that's another experience. Um, mobiles right now, even they take a VR, you can take a VR uh, glasses or specs, I'm not sure what they call it. You insert your phone in it. Samsung had a, had a collaboration with a VR um, brand, which I forgot, how could I? But anyways, you put your phone in the VR goggles and you just do the VR experience. So it seems like it's not that we're ahead of our time, it's just that people just need to see how practical it is and then with time it's gonna happen. I have huge faith with PlayStation 5 and the VR capabilities, what's gonna happen. I wanna do VR, it's fun. Have you ever tried VR? Of course. What games have you tried? Um, it's mainly like zombie games, but really? definitely it's not the best v during VR because yeah. it's traumatizing. Oh yeah. But that's mainly it. Um, but I would like, like, I would like to be purchasing an Oculus Rift and that's the Oculus. It's yes. Oculus Rift. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Oculus Rift. Yes. So I, I think VR is beautiful. Maybe the graphics are a bit. It needs work. Yeah. It does not feel very immersive as I would like it to be, mm. but the opportunities are endless and especially with your mobile games there are a lot of ar integrated right like pokemon go pokemon go of course yeah so this is that pop, that's like maybe the game that really popular popularized ar mm. and you could see a lot of other games and even on instagram you have filters that right bring right totems and objects to life it's very it's introducing people slowly to the Concept. You seem to me like a Pokemon Go girl. I mean, I would like to be more into it, yeah. but obviously I don't have the luxury to game so much. Right. But I do admire the game. I think right. it's beautiful and the fact that it promotes, you know, a healthy lifestyle, walking and um, this is maybe another question. Where is the future of mobile gaming going to go? And you know, that question, comes up pretty much in every panel, right? Where the future is. There was a time where we thought we have enough data and information of what can us be speculators of the future in certain fields. But if anything, this pandemic taught us is that 
we, we know kind of what the future is in certain points, but where is it heading, we don't know. We can say it all depends on people's cultures. And the companies and tech companies, they're capable of a lot of things, way more than what we have today. But they learned as well as that they don't want to introduce things a bit ahead of its time or ahead of our understanding of it. So for example, VR and mobile gaming, right? Um, or the mobile game, where's it heading? I guess we are part of that. We shape the future as well along the tech. Um, for example, Pokemon Go, right? What happened to it now? Like a lot of people that I used to know in Bahrain at least, in Saudi Arabia, they're just everywhere, you know? The point, certain coffee shops did promotions saying that, hey, we, we might have your, your rare Pokemon in our place. So everybody will storm to that coffee shop. It's like, I want to find that Pokemon Go movement. Oh, it's on your forehead. Cool. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> I'm, yeah, and I heard stories where someone would stop literally at a roundabout. That was my friend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like leave the car to catch a Pokemon. It, yeah. it, obviously, it becomes dangerous. But to be, I think really that we understate the importance or the gamification element where Gaming is more than just entertainment. It has become a source of education. Right, like gamification. Kids are True. playing it. Um, parents are choosing the games that have the education element where they could learn a language or learn shapes or whatever. Mm. And that's something why mobile gaming is so popular too. It's because of the education element. Right. And maybe that's where we're heading in the future. Cert we will learn new topics through gaming right and it's i think it's more fun than just learning through a True. textbook you heard of duolingo of course awesome duolingo is a gamification don't you think i think so and it's not a game per se but it's fun i mean collecting points competing yeah back maybe. and forth you yeah. see maybe this is why gaming is the terminology is very vague right and, I guess, right. you, like you said, the points, uh, in connecting with people, competing, the levels, and um, oh yes, it is education, but it's also a game, maybe. Tr trying to learn Japanese with that, let me just try to think. <laughs> Not, yeah. That's <laughs> Duolingo? A bit of it, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's great promotion for them, because that was amazing. Um, but yeah, I made that up, by the way. Did you? Half of it, at least, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's hope no one trolls uh, or people get angry for fake. No, but, but it, it's, it's just, like you said, gamification right now does take a big part of it. All right, now, um, hey, you're awesome. Seriously, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, because what you're doing right now is something that I wish we had 10 years ago. You're involved in curriculum, esports. You have a very nice, let's say, um, grip on what's happening with the mobile gaming. And definitely I see a future in you as well and what you're gonna do to people in Saudi Arabia, to Bahrain, and even the Middle East. Now, in your own words right now, where do you wanna see yourself in all of this, in the near future, even the far future? You wanna be a streamer? Do you wanna, you wanna see financial gains? You wanna see a purpose? You wanna see a passion? Where does Hay want to see herself in the gaming world? Tough question, really. I mean, I genuinely am a person who would go with the flow. Yeah. I am very open to learning new things, like not right. limiting myself to a certain um, path. I, at the beginning, I wanted to be a streamer. I wanted okay. to be a gamer. Right. But then as I grew older, I wanted to tackle the problems I had earlier Interesting. and educate people on what esports is really about. Right. And maybe in the future when esports become big, right. the next topic is, I don't know, it could be something new. It's, it's always changing and we mm. should always adapt. Mm. Um, I definitely, right now, currently at this moment, Hayo likes to explore esports under really fill in the gaps. And I truly believe that it's, more than just gaming, it's right. a whole ecosystem. Ecosystem, and true. It's fun, but also there's a lot of opportunities behind it. A lot of jobs can be created. True that. A lot of, um, a lot of talent that could go to waste if there has not been institutions right. guiding them, supporting them. Right. 
So yeah. Well, with Heya, Heya Bina, I guess, right? <laughs> Heya Bina, that's my Twitch name. <laughs> wow, <It is. laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. For me, I guess when it comes to the gaming world, it started off with I just want to play all the games in the world, you know, and naive me. But then it came to hosting gaming events. But then, you know, YouTube came and platforms and I was like, let me try streaming. It wasn't easy at all. You know, seeing people like PewDiePie, Benderita and all these big streamers, it's just, it's an actual work and it's time that I'm not sure if I can give away anymore, like you just said. Then uh, got involved in esports, you know, see what's happening over there. Uh, hosted a lot of esports events in Maldives, Portugal, Hong Kong, Macau, Bahrain, Egypt is happening, Dubai, beautiful stuff. But then you get to see right now, the gaming world is finding its strength more on the digital platforms rather than live stage, right? It became more of like a luxurious thing. So right now, I guess, it's see our position maybe in media, creating content, but different kind of content. And I, I hope in the future that what we can do is that we can see more intellectual content in the gaming world, you know? Tell people what to do, how, like you said, create jobs, and see what happens. So. Um, Hey, thank you so much. It's been an amazing talk with you. And I, I really see great things happening in the future. And hopefully yeah. we get to see you like a big shining star right <laughs> there, which you. you already are. Thank right. you for having me. And thank you for Digital Gaming Conference for this amazing opportunity. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, don't forget to follow her on Heya Bina right here. Ladies and gentlemen, this was it. We'll see you in the next session. So stay tuned. Ma salama.